Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this, messed up, can't see at night, ugly, Three, two, and turn them into something one. like this. Some of the most perfect headlight restoration you will ever perfect. see in your life, right here on this video. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turn. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Let's get down to business. As I uh, stated there in the uh, opener, that this is going to be, um, you're in for a treat, because this is going to be one of the best headlight restorations you've ever seen in your life. Okay, um... Everybody has, I mean, there's just a scale of perfection and there's a scale of um, everything from, you know, bullshit to perfection within anything. I operate my judgment or my scale of um, uh, pretty much compete with myself. Uh, and I'm not talking shit or anything, but I mean, there's not much that can hold a candle to this method and to um, my expertise as you see in over 100 of my videos uh, they all turn out the same it's just different levels of perfection different levels of top notch um, or whatnot and I'm not tooting my own horn nothing like that I'm just saying uh, the factual I'm a realist and I'm just giving you the facts you guys see it as well um, but with that being said uh, these next couple of lights are, um, are actually um, uh, you'll be seeing a couple lights like this. Um, my skill is um, a little bit higher now. Um, of course, you know, you, you're always going to one up yourself once you do something. You strive for perfection and you strive to be better once you already are at the top of, you know, the highest level. You're always going to improve one way or another. Uh, but this headlight, or both of these headlights, I'll be showing you. Um, and, you know, it's not really the moral of what's going on is just showing you, but I'm showing you on both how to obtain this as well. Uh, step by step, I've documented how I get this amazing outcome, and either you will be shocked if you've seen all of my other videos, or if you've seen a couple of them, this one will, you know, will curl your toes once you see the ending. Okay, um, these lights came out amazing. Um, but anyhow, I'm showing you and I'm attributing uh, this just to my new um, uh, techniques and uh, things that I'm using within my method. Because, you know, with any kind of method that you have, you can develop styles, you can develop uh, different little tweaks that you do to it. You know, if you, if you, you know, it's, it's you know, this method, you know, this uh, level or this step and that step and this step. But each step you can do it to your own way, whatever you figure out. Um, you know, I have some people say, oh, if I slow down, this happens and all this stuff. If I speed up, this happens and you can do them in your own way and see how they come out. Um, I experiment, uh, you know, all the time, uh, working experiments, meaning on different people's headlights or whatnot. But I know um, how far to push it before it starts affecting any kind of quality. Um, when I say that, I say uh, it loosely. Don't experiment on paying customers' cars or anybody's car. You don't want to fuck up. Um, when I'm doing it, I know that what I am doing is going to produce that perfect tin just in a different way or in a higher way, not in a less way. Okay. But um, like I said, my tributations to this is if you can see here, this is why I'm doing this angle. Do you see how smooth and soft touch I'm using? This, uh, the smoother and smoother and more steady I focus on, look how steady my hand is. You see how steady my hand is? This is not slow motion. This is not sped up. You see how steady my strokes are and how steady my pressure is. You see that interface pad is barely sinking in. Okay, I'm using very little to, uh, to next to none pressure. I'm letting the tool do the work for me. And if you notice, um, you know, it happens so fast and a lot of people don't know what to look for. But you really got to watch my, uh, you know, my work on this and you see I only used one sandpaper and with any kind of disc or any kind of pad the focus is repetition you know your your repetitious nature okay a lot of people a lot of people a men being if I just power through it I'll get it done I'll just put my muscles to it I'll put a little strength and just your mind tells you that even if you're not saying that that's what you're trying to do 
Um, it's very, um, it's a very sensitive, gentle thing. It's a, it's a pressure control thing, not a strength. It's a finesse thing, not a power thing. Okay. Now uh, I'm back to this angle again to show you guys, this is what my newfound success in, um, even in my range, I am pumping out headlights so much better than I ever have before out of all the years doing these headlight restorations because my touch and my steady handedness. Look at how steady that is. It's almost like a machine is moving this back and forth. I'm not wiggling, I'm not shaking, I'm not doing any kind of deviant or weird movements. It's very sleek and it's all at the same pressure, okay? Um, but like I said, you have to focus on the repetitiveness. You see how many times I'm going over each area? If you pick and you lock in on any kind of area, let's just say like, um, you know, up here, right here. Imagine how many times that you just watch me go over the same exact spot. 10, 12, 15, 20 times that quick, right? Uh, a lot of people like to think of it like I'm going over this spot one time and I'm getting it off. I'm going it over uh, uh, two times or three times and then I'm done with that spot. No, I like to take that one spot there and think 30, think 20, okay? And I'm not counting off. I'm just freely you know, going over each one until I feel that it has been done enough. You can feel it in the drill. You can feel it in in uh, the resistance of the the tip of the drill. Okay, you can feel it in the sandpaper. You can feel the gliding, the the uh, the rotation of it. It changes. You can see it. Okay, so there's many ways to tell. Um, and even with this, you see how gentle I'm going with my hand. If you can, if you can see, I'm only using my fingers. A lot of people, you know, you're using your palm or whatever. I'm just using my fingers strength to hold it still. And I'm going very gentle and shearing motions and still repetitious. You see that repetitious over and over and over again, you know, and it only takes and they're like, Oh my God, there's too much to do. But it, what did it just take 30 seconds? So how 30 seconds too much to do anything? It makes no sense, right? Just people are being lazy and they're thinking, no, you can't. This is not the way. This is not the way. But I just showed you over a hundred times on this video, on this on this channel, over a hundred times of perfection. Okay. And this is just random headlights. This is random headlights that I'm doing. Okay. This isn't like I'm gonna film this one and I'm gonna throw this one away. I'm only ones I've ever thrown away videos ever thrown away if it's if something's happened. Like I've had a couple where I accidentally hit the wrong button and it was like a slow-mo through the whole video, and then when I tried to counter correct it, it sounded hella weird, like skittish, you know, like it was slow recording and then I tried to speed it up to regular speed it just doesn't work or like uh, if um you know my camera you know I must I hit it the one time I hit it I guess I didn't know and it was like recording the side of the door while I did the headlight restoration but nevertheless I never like not record one that um like oh my god this came out like shit and this and that like no there's a reason why I have you know you're pushing a hundred uh, five star reviews in a short period of time uh you know and that's only five star reviews uh, in my day to day work or whatnot. Um, there's a huge reason for that because of my quality. Um, you know, besides, uh, you know, my um, social structure or, you know, my attentive to the customer and my friendliness and, and my professionalism, uh, you know, it all boils down to that shit uh, only means so much. It all boils down to your skill level. When I have somebody, I'm like, hey, I want you to come and paint my house. I mean, I don't give a fuck if you're an asshole or whatever. I do care, of course. But the main thing I want is you to perform. I want that shit to be like, that's the best painted house I've ever seen. I mean, what can I say after that, right? With that being said, uh, you know, get your skill up and this channel will do that. I mean, literally you have somebody on here not cutting, not uh, switching scenes, not doing stuff behind the scenes and bringing the camera back like I see all the time when I look at other people's videos. And it's like, you guys don't really know it or catch it, but I'd be like... He just did something different. He just did something that was not on camera that somebody would probably need to know if they're doing their method, right? I run, I'm one of the only ones that run their uh, headlight restorations from beginning to end. No slideshows, no snippets, no, I don't edit that way because what I am representing is the truth. I'm showing you the truth from the beginning to the end and further, okay? I'm showing you everything that I use. I'm being an open, transparent book. Okay. Um, 
and that's what it's all about. I believe that's what YouTube is about. When I look up YouTube and um, um, I'm like, hey, I want to learn how to um, uh, light my pilot light. What I just had a problem with in my house today, actually, um, pilot, my pilot light is out. I want to know how to do that. When I look it up, I don't want you hiding how to open it up. I don't want you skipping scenes and, oh, the panel's off now. Where were the screws at? Uh, now he's hiding where the screws are at. And it's and, and, and the thing is, in this art, in this fashion of headlight restoration, it's not an oversight. It's not like, oh, the guy forgot to show me how to take the screws out. No, in this, the motherfucker is hiding shit from you because he thinks his method is so magical. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The method is so magical. Well, I raised the bar through the roof. So, you know, why are you hiding your shit when it's not even on this level? That's the way I put it down. It's like, why hide your shit? This is what YouTube is about. Uh, do it yourself or DIY or uh, instructional videos or whatever. Uh, makes no sense to have an instructional video and you don't show 100% of what's going on. Um, if it's a secret, you shouldn't even be on here, right? <laughs> but anyways, that's just my ideology. So I've always tried to show you guys uh, the truth and tell you everything uh, that's going on. And whatnot. But anyways, you can kind of see how this light is turning out. I just did that dab method. Dab method is very important for doing headlight restoration. And if you did notice, uh, like I showed on the screen just now, um, I'm doing something I never have done before. I believe uh, this is one of the first times I ever did it. And I've been experimenting live with it. When I say live experimentation, I mean an actual customer's car, an actual person's car that I don't own or I don't know that is contracting me to do this or whatnot. Um, but live uh, testing with this product, which is the Chemical Guys and the 3M uh, product mixed together. Uh, the 3M is a perfect product. Okay. Uh, with that being said, sometimes some headlights have been um, aged a little bit and dehydrated a lot because these... Uh, uh, headlights this polycarbonate has natural oil reserves embedded inside uh, sometimes they liquefy sometimes they dry out excessively you know with um, the additive of um, doing all the sanding and stuff it dries it out even further so with this light was a little bit dry so what I uh, envisioned is adding a little bit of the chemical guys the chemical guys is super wet it would almost be a perfect product if their catalyst or their base was a little bit um i don't know uh cleaner and if they had a little bit less oil they're extremely heavy on oil so when you add it with such a perfect compound like this you get these kind of results here. Um, I've done this a couple times so far and it's been working out amazing. Um, I try to split it about a 70-30 uh, or whatnot uh, on average, uh, depending on how, um, how much saturation I'm trying to get in the light. But uh, you know, the beauty about the chemical guys is, is it's heavier endowed and UV resistant. Okay, that's why it's marked on the bottle. It says UV resistant. So it has a little added benefit uh, to it, a little extra UV uh, repellent and help underneath that clear coat when it's said and done. As you see right now, just look at it. It looks uh, amazing already. I'm going to show you the other light uh, after this from about this step here. And that's just to show you, I'm trying to add those in two more because I have a lot of people like, oh, what about the other light? And does it come out the same? Like, yes, of course it comes out the same. Why wouldn't it? It's very rare that it doesn't. That's like when they've had a, uh, you know, a 2010 car that just recently had one of the lights replaced from an accident. It's rare. They come out, you know, pretty much the same, but uh, that, that uh, stuff inside, that mirror stuff, uh, that aluminum type stuff yeah that stuff gets tarnished so it changes colors after a couple years so um it kind of gives a slight different appearance at sometimes even though it's crystal clear and perfect condition it's just an older light it's one of those things also been having a lot of uh questions about spraying you see how quick i sprayed right 
and uh you know and a lot of people are trying this weird shit just like start from one side and spray one line and start from the same side again and spray another line and start it's it's just too slow it's too random i mean not random it's too uniform just not random enough um what i do is a systematic approach to it but it is a more freestyle random spraying but with a self-leveling product which most sprays are okay expressly most sprays that are designed for headlights or self-leveling you want to move fast if you watch a video of the headlights being made um you will see the machines that move up there use sometimes they have one sometimes they have two little arms and when they spray they spray like you know randomly and they spray fast and it's done they're not sitting there one stroke two stroke three stroke with the can you know it's not done that way it's done similar to the way that i am doing them but right here i am literally like uh, an inch and a half away just now i was just now right now about four inches away uh and just look at this this is a uh what a 13 year old headlight plus Okay, this is the OEM, and look at it. It looks better than the day I rolled out the lot, and this lady even comes out. And I get that saying because people say it, like, religiously. They don't even watch my video. They don't know nothing about the Headlight Restoration Pro. It's, I've only had one customer that said, oh, you're the Headlight Restoration Pro, okay? And that was like a year ago. Um, but... They come out I'm like, oh my God, look at this. This is, I can't believe it. You, you must have changed those lights. They look better than the day I drove it off the lot. They say that shit better than the day I got it. Yeah, you know, and they've had it for that long. But anyways, we're doing the same thing here with the combination of both of the chemical guys and the um, uh, 3M here. And we're starting here at the dab method. Very important. Uh, the dab method allows you uh, time uh, paces you to make sure that the oils and the compound are penetrating into that light. That's why it slightly gets clearer. Okay. And it also allows you to penetrate them and push them into those pockets of the light. Cause once again, uh, polycarbonate looks like this under the microscope. If you blow it up, it looks like this or a woven towel or blanket or something like that. It has many caverns and stuff like that. Um, this step here is filling in those caverns and also uh, knocking down those peaks, making it more smoother like glass instead of uh, the surface of a sponge or a woven blanket. Okay, and that's why it gets clear on this step. And this is why you should only, always, only spray when it is crystal clear, just like the factory does when they're making headlights. The factory doesn't have the shit half grind it down and looking foggy and then spray them for a reason okay you get those reverse drips inside the headlight which mess up the headlight function which mess up the headlight health and longevity of the actual headlight we're not trying to preserve coatings here we're trying to preserve the actual headlight okay that's what matters but nevertheless it doesn't take that much pressure you see how i um, am holding this with uh one hand okay one hand i'm holding this uh, for most of this part i was just showing you that it doesn't take much pressure um you know you just want to glide it across and um just let it touch the surface just like anything else and you definitely don't want to double coat a headlight ever uh the factory does not double coat a headlight and there's many reasons for this as well that have to do with performance and longevity and these things like that but primarily performance um you should check out this video here uh why not to double coat it'll tell you about those crusts and uh you know basically uh when it when this material or any kind of material starts to dry when you're doing multiple coats even waxing or whatever do multiple coats or multiple coats of paint on the, on the house or whatever you get to a point where uh there's layers and those layers have crusts now even if what's underneath those crusts aren't dry yet that crust is dried so you're laying another layer on it and it forms another crust and another crust another crust and then these different layers if when when concerning see-through stuff these different layers reflect light and um refractor lights more and more with each layer of coating okay so we'll check that video out and um you know actually i'm just going to insert a um why not to uh, uh, double coat little um, excerpt here at the end 
uh, so you can check that out. But look at that one uniform coating. I do a light touch all the way around, and then I start laying in a heavy coat all the way around. I keep it moving, and see how fast I'm moving? I'm not just staying in one spot. I'm, se I'm five to seven inches away, and then I stop. It takes that quick. It takes 10 seconds to coat a light. Okay, a lot of people, you're going to get drips and this and that. If you're hanging around in one one little area too long, you're going and going and going and you're too close. There's a lot of, a lot of variabilities. But, um, you know, when you're watching my videos, you got to think you have 100 videos uh, plus of this guy making perfect headlight restoration. And you can just watch it. Say, I'm having a problem with this. Flawless I'm having a problem with my coating. Guess what? Watch 100 videos of me coating. I'm having a problem with my sanding. Watch 100 videos of me sanding. You don't got to watch the whole thing. Just watch that one part. I got a problem polishing. You know, watch a couple videos just on that part. It's always going to be here, right? You see, I got my drip on today, right? You know, got one of them on. Uh, but look at this, you know, and you're saying, oh, well, that's just freshly. That's not dried yet. This is dried already. This is dried already. Okay, only this product only takes, uh, you know, about 60 sec 30, 30 to 60 seconds, depending on the weather, for the crust to dry. For the entire light to dry underneath it would be about uh, two to three minutes. Now, look at this. This is the light I did first. I'm touching this right now with my fingers. I'm rubbing it. It's completely dry and it looks the same. And that's the beauty about this product because once you spray it, you know what it's going to look like when it's actually finished and dried. Okay. But that's uh, the fans, air, force air drying. That's my um, my bench. And all this stuff here is in the bio. If you look in the bio, um, you can always just look to see the stats and see what it is, see what it costs. Um, and it's always there for purchase as well. So you get the stats. And this right here is a couple minutes later. And you see how it just looks perfect. More double perfect. coat. Now, when spraying the coating, you're creating a shell. Uh, spraying the coating or even wiping the coating or doing whatever other sealant that you're using, uh, clear coat is a shell around the headlight. It's clear and it bonds to the headlight and it hardens much like glass. Within the first couple seconds, it forms a crust around the outer layer well before the other depths of clear coat dry. This crust is on a level much more clear than the rest of the clear coat. Kind of like when you look through a piece of glass and it's super clear, but if you break it and look through the side, it is foggy. In this diagram here, this represents the headlight surface and the headlight crust. This headlight represents light escaping. Nice, big, full. This column here represents one layer of clear coat, which forms a crust, the second crust. Now, the second crust is a true crust. The first crust here is not a true crust. It is bleaching into or pretty much soaking into the porousness of the headlight surface in terms of headlight restoration. So it has become part of the headlight. So light can escape just the same, if not better, in some cases. This brings us to coat number two of clear coat which brings about the formation of crust number three. Coating number two merely adheres to crust number two. It does not soak into the headlight or the other coating. It merely becomes another layer of coating, which distorts clarity and distorts the escaping of light. Now you're wondering, the main culprit of distortion in this diagram is what? The formation of these crusts. Crust number two and crust number three. Primarily, crust number three is the one which can only arrive from the application of coat number two of clear coat. Crust number two by itself is an enhancer in what it should be. To even further touch basis, let's go over these metaphoric examples. Let's take a look at these glasses here. If you pay close attention, notice how this area here is clear. Or shall I say more clear than this area here? Why? Because there's more layers, more crusts involved. Blocking the visual clarity and the passage of light. Pay close attention to this other metaphorical example. See how the different levels here entail different levels of clarity. This being the clearest and every layer getting less and less clear. This is because those crusts different separated layers overlapping one another to obtain the utmost highest level highest quality of clearness you must not double coat or more 
Let's view that one more time here. Using a heavy coat, but just one. This particular product dries in uh, about 80 degree heat in about 120 seconds. If your coating takes longer, you should not be using it. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Believe whatever you want. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth.